My friends and family, my name is Jason. I am the gardener. I am the proud gardener for the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And I'm proud to be serving Yahoo in any way, shape, form that I can. And it is by his blessings that this channel even exists and that you are even here. All glory to his son, Yahushua HaMashiach. He will be our king and hopefully soon because the world is in dire need of a king. Now, <clears throat> it's been good to see and it's only by the blessings of Yahuwah that I'm able to see and sit here today and deliver a message. And that was one of the worst things that happened to me when I went blind is that I usually spend probably close to three hours a day reading scriptures. And I'm not reading scriptures to simply teach. I'm reading scriptures so that I can learn myself. I'm teaching myself. And when I run across something interesting, I think to myself, self, you know, somebody else might find this interesting. Maybe somebody else hasn't read this or, or maybe we can pull together some particular piece of some scriptures together and make something good of it, right? Make something that we can uh, figure out what the will of our creator is. And it wasn't until I came into Torah that I had any idea what the heart, mind, and soul of our creator was. I was raised up in the Christian religion where we are able to do literally anything. And I had an individual that's just, he's arguing with me on, on 153news.net. And he says he eats pork every single day. He says the pork fat helps him digest vegetables and that all food has been made cling and that Peter had a dream. And, you know, those are the things that people say right out of the gate. Right. And I say to everybody out there, if you have swine in your fridge, if you eat pork, by default, you are not a child of Yahuwah. The people of Yahuwah, the, the children of Yahuwah are people who are in covenant with Yahuwah. That means when he says something, we do it. Now, as parents, I can help relate to some of this because what really upsets me is when I tell my kids to do something and they go the other way around it, right? Or they do something different. And just like there is a Torah of our creator, there's also a laws of my house, right? And they are not the same as the laws of our creator. It's different things. It's micromanagement down to a different level to keep the kids in order, to keep them straight. And when the kids disobey, bad things happen. Take, for instance, just a brief moment in time yesterday, and we're always dealing with cows around here, and we have a bunch of new babies. One of the babies escaped. One of the boys got a hold of his leg, and my wife says to the other boy, put a rope around his neck, okay? And when we would have peacefully taken the little calf back, um, but... The problem here was, is that boy decided he was going to pick the cow up and take off with the cow because they're small cows and you could probably do that, but they were new cows. And so he's a little spooked. He wasn't doing so well, you know, a little, a little shaky. And so the boy picks him up and the cow kicks him, right? Kicks him, drops him, puts him down. The cow jumps away and the way it goes. Simple acts of obedience, even, even under pressure and not pressure as a parent, that's what we look for. And that is how we determine the respect that our kids have for us. If my kid is always going contrary to the laws of the house, then I know my kids have zero respect and they would need to get their knapsacks and take off and head off to the next, you know, their next part of life if they don't want to keep the laws, statutes, and commands of, of the house and the creator, right? And the house falls under the laws of the creator. And so this is where, we must understand that if things like this would annoy us, things like this would make us angry. Imagine what our creator does when he has created a path for us and has delivered a Torah into our hands. Who doesn't have a Bible? Who does not have access to a Bible in 2022, right? He has delivered a book into our hands that if we are not lazy, we will read. He has given us the truth. There's no truth that's blinded from anyone's eyes. If we walk forever in the church at some point, if we do not read our Bibles, then we were never, ever close to our creator to begin with. We don't know what our creator wants 
unless we understand his laws, statutes, and commands. And there's books of the Bible that are taken out, that have been taken out, that have been hidden from us, that are, that are pulled out for some reason, right? And today, I want to go over a couple things. One, right here, is we have a religion of people that believe the laws of God are on the cross, but yet they will accept the, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are the, the uh, uh, moral law, as they call them, and those are the ones that we can keep. But we don't have to keep the other laws, right? That is, that is the Christian conundrum. The Bible, from the front to the end, says we should keep the law, statutes, and commands for all times. It is what we should be shouting for joy every single day as we see our family and as we, we uh, mentor our household, as we live our life, doing whatever it is we should do. It should be a personal walk. We should be, we should be reading them. We should, we should be understanding that our life is here. It's just temporary. We are in a brief moment of time. And when you're talking eternity, we get impatient about years. We get impatient about days. We get impatient about months, right? But we're talking about a creator who has existed as long as we, we know what time is. And he's probably existed beyond that. We won't know, right? And so it is kind of crazy that we will forsake the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator and put them on the cross that we don't have to know them that we don't have to uh, abide by them. And here's a couple of laws, which I just wanted to kind of go over. And I, you know, these are the laws that people don't want to keep, right? These are the laws right here. And this is, uh, I think, I, when they come up with 613 laws, I think that is um, Jewish stuff, because I think there's actually a lot more laws than that. The very first one is to be fruitful and multiply. It comes right out of the first book of Genesis. Uh, or maybe second. I think it's first. But uh, actually, no, it's second. And um, here are some other laws, right? And when you want to abolish the laws and say that our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Christ, is, as we've come to understand a pagan name, has said, you know, um, this, this is it. It's dangerous territory when we say that we don't want to keep the laws. I mean, the very first one here is to know that there is a God, right? To have not other gods. To know that he is one, right? In the Shema, and that's what's right there, the Shema, it's like, oh, here Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim is one. He is one. He's not, he's not a trinity. He's not the Father and the Son. He's the Father and he wields the power of the spirits. But the Son is the Son, right? Fourth commandment here, to, to love him, to fear him. To sanctify his name, not to profane his name, to worship him as he has ordered and not destroy holy objects, to listen to the true prophets, not to test the prophet. And there are tests for prophets. There's a Deuteronomy test that will will surely, if a prophet prophesies and it doesn't come true, he's not a, he's not a man of Yahuwah. Guys, which one of these laws are okay to put on the cross? Because in the Ten Commandments, to love your neighbor as yourself, that is our Messiah's, one of the greatest commandments, but it is still repeating the Torah, right? And if to love converts, not to hate your brother in heart, these are all what our Messiah talked about. Forgiveness, 70 times 7. To reprove your brother when necessary. Not to embarrass others. Not to oppress the weak. Not to slander. Not to take revenge. Not to bear a grudge, Right? Teach Torah to your children, to respect and defer to the elders, right? You're supposed to take care of the old. We're all supposed to take care of the old. So when we believe that the laws of God are on the cross, I ask you, which ones do you want to put on the cross and why would you want to put them on the cross, right? Why would you not want to live as our creator wants us to live? His son said we should live just like that as well. But that is not the point of this because I wanted to actually go over Jubilees Uno, Jubilees Uno. And um, this is, uh, I finally made it through that last teaching. And so here I am with his, with a new teaching. And um, when I was reading this, it just kind of hit me, right? This is one of these books that is out of the Bible. And let's begin and see what we can figure out. Jubilees 1. And it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Yisrael out of Mitzrayim, in the third month, on the 16th day of the month, that Elohim spoke to Moshe, saying, Come up to me. On the mount, and I will give you two sapphire stones of the Torah and of the commandment which I have written.
that you may teach them. So right out of the gate, he's supposed to come up and get a couple of uh, things that he's supposed to teach others, right? And Moshe went up into the Mount of Elohim, and the glory of Yahuwah abode on Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed it six days. And he called to Moshe on the seventh day out of the midst of the cloud, and the appearance of the glory of Yahuwah was like a flaming fire on the top of the mount. And Moshe was on the mount 40 days and 40 nights, and Elohim taught him the earlier and the later history of the division of all the days of the Torah and of the testimony. Right? So right out of the gate, our creator is teaching him all about the Torah, right? This is this is what is important to our creator. And this is why it is so dangerous when we don't keep the laws of God, when we don't even know the laws of God. When we, when we eat unclean foods and do evil things in, in the sight of our creator. Verse 6. And he said, Incline your heart to every word which I shall speak to you on this mount. And if we look at this today, our creator is saying to us, he's like, guys, incline your heart to every word which I shall speak to you. And write them in a sephir in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant, which I established between me and you for their generations this day on Mount Sinai. Verse 7. And thus it will come to pass, when all these things come upon them, that they will recognize that I am more righteous than they in all their judgments and in all their actions, and they will recognize that I have been truly with them. Guys, and how can you not say commandments like this aren't good. These are righteous, right? Not to worship idols, not to bow down to idols, not to make an idol, not to make or cast an image, not to make gods of silver or gold, not to turn a people to idolatry, to destroy a city that is turned to idol worship, not to rebuild that city, not to retain any benefit from that. Guys, we are, we are, this, our creator is holy in this. And what he just said is that we will recognize that he is holy in all of this. And we must we must understand this. Verse 8. And do you write for yourself all these words which I declare unto you this day? For I know their rebellion and their stiff neck. Before I bring them into the land of which I swore to their fathers, to Abraham, and to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, saying, Unto your seed I will give a land flowing with milk and honey. And this is, I, I highlighted this because I got to thinking about this. This is us, Right? This very first part is us, and they will eat and be satisfied. And what happens when, we, when we're eating and satisfied, right? We do not seek the creator. When life is going well, we do not seek the creator that has been calling us all of our lives. And they will turn to strange Elohim, to Elohim which cannot deliver them from aught of their tribulation. And this witness shall be heard for a witness against them. Guys, when you're at a church on a Sunday when you're worshiping a God that is contrary to how our creator wants us to worship, you are worshiping strange Elohim. Yahuwah is not in a 501c3 Sunday worshiping pig loving church. He's not there. It's all an abomination and he is not in buildings made with sticks and stones. Now, this is very important because why are these people getting owned? Verse 10, for they will forget all my commandments, even all that I command them, and they will walk under the other na after the other nations and after their uncleanness and after their shame and will serve their Elohim. And these will prove unto them an offense and a tribulation and an affliction and a snare. Guys, we are all waking up. If you have not noticed, we are all in captivity. When we put our masks on, that is a sign that we are no longer free. When the entire setup and the entire system, and this is, we are an oppressed people. We are now beyond captivity. We have woken up in a Babylonian system. We have woken up and very few people are speaking of the Torah. But because the Bible says at the end times, everybody comes to Torah, I'm only speaking to a minority who's going to become the majority. Right? Everybody's going to seek Yahuwah. Everybody's going to look for him. Right? So have you fallen into this? Have you fallen into the snares that we don't keep the commandments? Do you go to a church that says the commandments of God are gone? 
Verse 11, and I will perish and they will be taken captive and will fall into the hands of the enemy because they have forsaken my ordinances and my commandments and the feasts of my covenant and my Shabbats and my holy place, which I have sanctified for myself in their midst and my tabernacle and my sanctuary, which I have sanctified for myself in the midst of the land that I should set my name upon it and that it should dwell there. Verse 12, and they will make to themselves high places and Asheroth poles and graven images. Guys, graven images. Do you have a, do you sit there and worship a cross? Do you have a cross around your neck? Do you have uh, idols and pictures of, of what God should look like, right? Those are all graven images, right? <laughs> Asheroth poles and graven images, and they will worship each his own graven image so as to go astray, and they will sacrifice their children to devils and to all the works of the error of their hearts. My friends, we murder 5,000 to 7,000 babies in North America every single day. From the abortion pills to the Moloch's tables where they take the ladies in and they destroy the baby day after day after day. Guys, it was 5,000 back in the day. It's Now they have the abortion pills. You can, you can have an abortion at home. Just take a pill. Get rid of that, that troublesome little burden in your tum-tum, right? That's uh, sacrificing your children. And we do that every day. And I will send witnesses unto them that I may witness against them, but they will not hear and will slay the witnesses also. And they will persecute those who seek the Torah and they will abrogate and change everything so as to work evil before my eyes. How many people do you know when you talk to them about the Torah absolutely hate you or are like, ah, we don't, that's, that's the laws of Moshe, right? That's the, that's, that's for God's people. And <laughs> you're right. It is absolutely God's people. Verse 14, and I will hide my face from them and I will deliver them into the hand of the other nations for captivity and for a prey and for devouring. And I will remove them from the midst of the land and I will scatter them amongst the other nations. Verse 15, here we go again, guys. And they will forget all my Torah and all my commandments and all my judgments and will go astray as to the two new moons and Shabbats and feasts and jubilees and ordinances. And, you know, you have a lot of Lunar Day Sabbath keepers. And it's two separate events, guys. New Moon and Sabbath are, are two separate things. It's uh, it's not, a, you know, a new... Just because it is a new month does not make it a new week. And so we have to make sure that our calendar is right. Verse 16. And after this, they will turn to me from amongst the other nations with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their strength. And I will gather them from amongst all the other nations. And they will seek me. So that I shall be found of them when they seek me with all their heart and with all their soul. Guys, this is a promise from our creator. This is a promise of protection. And, and this is when you are seeking our creator with not just your lips, but with your life, with your soul, with everything. Are you keeping the laws, statutes, and commands? Have you given the faith in the Messiah? That's the question. And I will disclose to them abounding peace with righteousness and I will remove them, the plant of uprightness with all my heart and with all my soul and they shall be for a blessing and not a curse and they shall be the head and not the tail. And I will build my sanctuary in their midst and I will tabernacle with them and I will be their Elohim and they shall be my people in truth and righteousness. And for those who kept Shabbat and keep Shabbat, you will understand that our creator will tabernacle with you. Verse 19, and I will not forsake them nor fail them, for I am Yahuwah Elohim. Guys, this is our this is a promise. This is the the world's most powerful individual. And he has given you this promise, and you must receive the faith. You must have the faith to receive the promise. You must have the works of obedience because you have the faith. Right? We don't do works, we don't do the law because we we are saved we do it because we are thankful for being saved and there's no reason to keep striping our messiah on the back for sins that he's already he's already paid the price for why do we keep flogging our messiah why will we not live in the law statutes and commands of our creator now after this moshe and moshe fell on his face and prayed and said oh yahuwah elohe do not forsake your people and your inheritance so that they should wander in the air of their hearts and do not deliver them into the hands of their enemies, the other nations, lest they should rule over them and cause them to sin against you. 
Let your mercy, O Yahuwah, be lifted up upon your people and create in them an upright Ruach and not let the Ruach of Belial rule over them. Belial without profit, worthlessness, by extension, destruction, wickedness. So don't let the Ruach of wickedness rule over them to accuse them before you and to ensnare them from all the cycles of righteousness so that they may perish from before your face. But they are your people and your inheritance, which you have delivered with your great power from the hands of the Mitzrayim. Create in them a cling heart and a Ruach HaKadosh and let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth until eternity. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, I know their contrariness and their thoughts and their stiff neckedness and they will not be obedient till they confess their own sin and the sin of their fathers. Guys, why is this important? Because there is a generational curse that falls upon all of us from our parents. If your parents are not keeping Torah, then and their parents that keep Torah in this, we are under the curse of this. We are under a generational curse. And to break this curse, we must come into Torah. We must come into Torah. We must, we must pray for the forgiveness of our fathers who did not keep the Torah. And we must start a new generation of those who do. Because that's the only way to the kingdom. The kingdom is not meant for those who do not keep commandments. And after this, they will turn to me in all uprightness and with all their heart and with all their soul. And I will circumcise the foreskin of their heart and the foreskin of their heart of their seed. And I will create in them a Ruach HaKadosh and I will cleanse them so that they shall not turn away from me from that day into eternity. And their souls will cleave to me and to all my commandments. Guys, do you cleave to Yah? Do you know his commandments that you can even cleave to them? Or have you been told for years and years and years the commandments don't matter? That somehow we are under a special cloak that nobody else in the entire Bible has ever been under. You can't be disobedient and expect anything to happen. Good. You can expect curses. So, and cleave to me and to all my commandments and they will fulfill my commandments. And I will be their father and they shall be my children. And they shall be called children of the living Elohim. And every angel and every Ruach shall know. Yea, they shall know that these are my children, that I am their father in uprightness and righteousness, and that I love them. And do you write down for yourself all these words, which I declare unto you on this mountain, the first and the last, which shall come to pass in all the division of the days in the Torah and in the testimony and in the weeks and the Jubilees unto eternity. What? The Torah's till eternity? Everything's until eternity? Yeah. Until I descend and tabernacle with them throughout eternity. And he said to the angel of the presence, Write for Moshe from the beginning of creation till my sanctuary has been built among them for all eternity. And Yahuwah will appear to the eyes of all. And all shall know that I am the Elohim of Yisrael and the father of all the children of Yaakov. Guys, you are the children of Yaakov. You are the children of Yisrael. You must claim your title. You must claim that right. How do you claim the right? By keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. By being holy in his sight. By putting away evil. By being good. So here it is. He's going to tabernacle with us. I am the Elohim of Yisrael and the father of all the children of Yaakov and the king on Mount Zion for all eternity. And Zion and Jerusalem shall be holy. And the angel of the presence who went before the camp of Yisrael took the ta tables of the divisions of the years from the time of creation of the Torah and of the testimony of the weeks of the Jubilees according to the individual years, according to all the number of the Jubilees, according to the individual years, from the day of the new creation, when the heavens and the earth shall be renewed, and all their creation according to the powers of the heaven, and according to all the creation of the earth, until the sanctuary of Yahuwah shall be made in Jerusalem on Mount Zion, and all the luminaries be renewed for healing and for peace, and for blessing, for all the elect of Yisrael. And thus it may be from that day unto all the days of the earth. So my friends, as we are as we are reading our scriptures as we are trying to find the truth. The truth is no not found anywhere other than the scriptures. Don't take my word for it. Everything I say is right out of the scriptures. Everything I say is parroting. I'm just parroting the truth that I never heard growing up. I'm parroting the truth that is it is missing 
from all these 501c3 Sunday worshiping churches, even from the Seventh-day Adventists. They only keep one command. They don't keep the rest of them. What about all the rest of the commands that keep us alive? What about the commandment nobody knows about that we don't drink the blood because there's life in the blood? When you cook your steak, you've got to cook the blood out, right? Because there's life in the blood. When you kill something, you're supposed to put dirt over the top of the blood. Guys, there's something about the blood, and that is why people drink it. That's why they drink the blood of the young, right? It's evil. It's evil in the sight of our creator. Guys, there's one way. If you do not choose this day who you will serve, another day may not come. You may wake up in eternity and it may be on the wrong side. You may wake up in hell and it is not a good place to be. There's way more than raising your hand as a kid, or saying a prayer and hoping you're going to end up in heaven, right? It's a walk. It's a lifetime walk. It is a commitment. Our creator is the husbandman. We are the groom. Our Messiah is the, is the husbandman. We are the groom. It's the same thing. Choose this day who you will serve. Much love. I'm out.